In today's video, I'm going to be answering the top three questions about hydro dipping that I get in the YouTube comment section all the freaking time. You know, because I get a bunch of questions in the comment section like every single day, and I read every single one of them. So, top three questions, let's go. Welcome to All Things Fun Hydrographics, or ATF Hydrographics for short, and this is another edition of our video series that we like to call Just the Tip, where we give you guys at home great tips and tricks on how you can become a better DIY hydro dipper. Today's video is brought to you in part by One Hit Wonder Paint Company, these guys right here. If you are in the market for some hydro dipping supplies, hydro dipping paint, hydro dipping activator, and all things hydro dipping, these are the guys you need to check out. They've got DIY kits for beginner all the way up to pro level products that you can use in your shop. And if you want to save some money when you shop there, stick around to the end of the video. I will maybe give you a coupon code and save a couple dollars when you shop there. Alrighty, so top three questions that I get asked the most often in the comments section about hydro dipping. Let's start with number A. So I get this question about once a day at least, and it's how long after you paint something do you wait before you can start dipping it? I find that people put way too much thought and effort into this. It's, it's really not that difficult. As soon as the part is dry to the touch after you painted it, you can go ahead and start dipping. Now, depending on which paint you're using, your dry time is going to vary, and it also depends on your temperature and humidity where you're at. If you're in that mid-60s to about 75, 80 degree range, most of your hydro dipping paints are going to dry somewhere in the 20 to 30 minute range, and then you'll be safe to dip after that. If you're using a paint like One Hit Wonder, you're probably going to be a really, really low dry time, somewhere around the 10 to 15 minute mark, and then you'll be ready to dip. Now as that temperature goes up, usually the dry time goes down. It really just depends on where you're painting at and if you have any airflow and things like that. Airflow such as what's in a paint booth where the air is constantly moving will help dry the parts a lot faster. Now if you're painting in low temperatures, anything below 65 for 99% of the hydro dipping paints out there, I would not even bother. Don't try painting when it's cold outside. You will have nothing but issues. It never dries all the way or it takes so long to dry. It's just not even worth it. So about 65 for normal hydrographics paints is my cutoff, which is one of the reasons that I switched over to One Hit Wonder paint because I have tested it all the way down to 40 degrees. I, yes, I have painted with that stuff outside in 40 degree weather and it dried in about 15 minutes just like it was supposed to. But other hydro dipping paints below about 65, I don't even bother anymore. Now, when I say dry to the touch, I mean you should be able to pick up your part, stick your finger on it just like this, and not leave any fingerprints. If you can pick the part up and it's leaving fingerprints or you're messing up the paint at all, it is not dry enough yet. Let it dry and then you can start dipping. And honestly, I'm not sure why everybody's in such a rush to dip everything all the time. I mean, most of the hydrographics paints out there on the market nowadays it give you at least a few days to dip. So there shouldn't be any big rush to paint your part and then dip it right away. I know that sometimes people get excited and they're like, oh, I can't wait to dip this. Just don't rush it and then important thing to remember is make sure the paint is completely dry to the touch before you try to dip it. Question number C. I get this one all the time about clear coats. Yes, it is a requirement to put a clear coat on after you dip. For some reason, people think you can just take this and slap it in the water and come out and like, oh, look, it's pretty and not have to put a clear coat over it, but the dip itself is actually not that durable. What's durable is the clear coat that you put over the top of it. And I know that not everybody likes their stuff to be your standard clear coat, which is a super high gloss finish. That is not the only clear coat option out there. You can also go with a flat, something like this, that doesn't have any shine to it at all. And if you're feeling really frisky, you can mix the two together and make like a semi-gloss kind of look, if you like that. But clear coat is definitely a requirement. You are going to need clear coat to protect whatever it is that you dip and to protect the graphics itself so that they don't get worn off or damaged later on down the road. I've got a more in-depth video covering a lot about clear coats. If you want to go check it out, I'll leave a link to it right up here. And question number yellow. Very often in my videos, you will see that I dip objects that have two sides, and I dip each side separately. And a question that I get asked all the time is how long do you wait after you dip one side before you dip the other side? And again, this is something that I see people put way too much thought and effort into. It's not that big of a deal. What you're going to do is tape off one side, you'll dip the opposite side. Rinse it off for 5 to 10 minutes, however long it takes to get all that slimy PVA film off and then just let it dry. As soon as it's dry to the touch, you can go ahead and tape the side that you already dipped, flip it over, and dip the opposite side. And if you're in a really big hurry, you can take an air gun like this, get you some compressed air, and blow it off real quick, and you can be dipping again in five minutes if you're in that big of a rush and you really need to dip. And most of the time, I just kind of let stuff sit off to the side. If it needs to dry overnight, it needs to dry overnight. No big deal. 
The key thing to remember with double dipping like I do is that you need to make sure the part is completely dry before you try to dip the other side. What will happen is there will be little bits of water or moisture that are trapped inside some little crevice or back behind something and when you go to dip that opposite side that water may fall out of that little crack or crevice and onto your film and it will ruin it. Another thing that can happen is water can like say drip out of here and start running down the side as you're going to dip and anything that's wet the dip will not stick to. So you just need to make sure that whatever you're double dipping, make sure that it is completely 100% dry before you go try to dip the other side. If you hung around in the video this long, you are getting a treat because I'm going to give you a bonus. So this last one is question number lamp. There's a lot of hydro dipping videos out there on the internet and on YouTube, and if you've seen them before, you'll see a lot of times when people are dipping something like this, they will dip one side, and as they're dipping it, they will roll it over and dip the other side all at once. And I do not do that. And a lot of people ask me, they're like, why don't you just you know, stick it in there, roll it over, and dip it all at once and be done with it? That is a great question. And the reasoning for why I choose to dip each side comes down to two things. One, technique, and two, looks. The rolling technique, when you're actually rolling something over in the water, requires a very, very steady hand and a lot of practice. And you're not always going to get it right on the first try. And I found that over the years of doing this over and over and over, I wind up having more redos when I try to roll something than if I just take my extra little bit of time and dip each side separately. Also, probably from years of caffeine and nicotine addiction, I have a little bit of shake in my hands and I don't always roll very well without having a little bit of shake. So not being able to be super, super steady sometimes works against me, which is why I do each side separately. The other major reason that I do each side separately is because of looks. On things like this, there are lots of little areas that are dips and voids and places that have little holes in them that will trap air when you go to roll over. And because of the angle that you have to roll over, a lot of times you are actually just setting it down in the water like this. And what'll happen is it'll trap air in places like this. And then the film will just kind of go bloop and you'll have a big void there, which requires a lot of time going in and touching all that stuff by hand or trying to tape it off and dip that little bitty section again. And I just don't do that. I would much rather take a few extra minutes, tape off one side, go in at a really, really steep angle so that I can make sure that that film is feeding up into all those little voids and holes and stuff. And that gives me a better overall look with a lot less touch-ups. And because this is my business, this is what I do for a living, I want all of my stuff to be as pristine as it possibly can be when I give it back to a customer. So I take the extra time and the extra effort to make sure that my dips look perfect. And dipping each side at a time at very steep angles to make sure that we get complete coverage is a lot more important to me than speed. If you can do the rolly technique, by all means, go right ahead. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It's just for me, that is what I prefer to do because it looks better and my technique on rolling is not all that great. So big thank you to our channel sponsors for helping us put out videos like this. If you would like to get a coupon code to either One Hit Wonder or our other channel sponsor, Freedom Lube, I've got links to those down in the description box below. If you're interested in learning more about hydro dipping and getting some actual training, we have a training program over on Patreon. You can check that out. I've got a link below down in the description box. I post new videos over there every single week talking about things that I can't show you here on YouTube. So if you want to learn more, check out our Patreon for our online training. A couple of quick things for our regular subscribers or those of you that are new. Do me two favors. Go right down below this video and check and make sure you are still subscribed and make sure that that bell is pushed. If you don't already know, YouTube hates the fact that I work on things that go pew pew. And because of that, I've been like having subscribers disappear and people are going months and months wondering where I've been because they're not getting any notifications that I'm posting new videos. Thank you, YouTube. <coughs> Shadow ban. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of happening. And the larger that the channel grows, the more that this is going to become an issue. So just on a regular basis, maybe once a month, just go check your subscription and make sure that you are still subscribed and they're not unsubs unsubscribing you in the middle of the night and make sure that your bell notification is turned on so that you are getting notifications when I post new videos. Also, if you're not familiar with how YouTube works, it is algorithm based. So your interaction with the video means a lot to how many people get to see my videos. And right now, not a whole lot of people are getting to see them because YouTube is not happy with the way my algorithm looks. So if you have a free moment after you watch the video, make sure that you hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that you're actually liking the videos that I'm putting out. And also leave a comment, even if it's just a quick, hey, thanks for putting a video out, anything helps. And I do read every single comment. I check them several times a week. I make it a habit to respond to most of them unless the commenter was a butthole, then I just delete them. And I also personally really like the comments because that is where I get a lot of ideas for videos. You guys ask questions and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a good question. Let me do a video on that very, very soon. 
So that is that. We've got merch coming very, very soon. I will launch a video here on YouTube and over on Instagram and Facebook whenever the merch is available. And then next week, there will not be a video. I'm going to be out of town filming a video for my John Boat channel, and things are going to be a little bit crazy next week for me. So we're just going to take a week off, and then I'll see you guys back here for another Just a Tip video in two weeks. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's roll the bloopers. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the three... I'm not, well, I'm not talking. I'm answering questions. Why would I be talking? Well, I have to talk to answer questions. That just... Whatever. <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> this is another edition of our... Uh, of our... Uh, video. 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 If you are a DIY... 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 If you're a DIY hydrodip... Most of your hydrographics, hydrographics, hydrographics paints, hydro... You can take an air gun like this and rinse it off. Why would you rinse with an air gun? You need to rinse with a hose. If you're rinsing with this, you're doing it wrong. Oh my God. More in-depth video. Uh, uh, we're back to the us again. We've been doing so good. We've been like two months with no us and now we're uh. In today's video, we're going to be answering the three cop, uh, three cop, three cop question, three cop question. No, no, just no. Start over. Oh my God.